Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here and welcome back to my channel. It is a gorgeous day outside today here in North Texas. So I thought what better opportunity to take you guys out back and give you a tour of all of my backyard plants, both in pots and in the ground. I do have a ton of tropical plants out there. Some of them are also able to be used as house plants. Most of them actually do live indoors for me, at least the ones in pots in the winter. And everything that is planted in the ground has started to spring back up from dying back over the winter and things are just looking absolutely beautiful out there. So I thought I would take this opportunity to share it with you. So why don't you go ahead and come meet me outside? All right, you guys. So I thought we'd start right outside the backyard door here with my banana tree, which actually is multiple banana trees, if I'm being honest with you right now. This is a bunch of pups from the original banana tree that I had, and that's why they're kind of short right now. They're going to get much taller as we go through the season. But this is a dwarf variety, a dwarf Cavendish musa is the scientific name. And I absolutely love how the new leaves come in with this kind of brownish purplish tone to them but as it gets older those leaves will come in much more green but absolutely love it I have not actually gotten bananas yet but maybe perhaps this year we will but I do need to kind of separate these out because if I get down in here you're going to be able to see those two kind of dead areas in the middle there, that is where the original two stalks were. And as I said, all these new offshoots are just pups. So I really need to get in here and kind of at least separate this into two plants. So that's gonna be a project for this upcoming weekend. But from here, let me go ahead and give you a broad view of the backyard. So you can see here, we have the pool and the landscaping over there behind the pool. There's gonna be some additional landscaping over here that we're gonna cover, but we're gonna cover some potted plants first and then we'll move into non-potted plants and then some more potted plants. And we're just gonna kind of go back and forth as we go through this tour. And over here is where I like to work first thing in the morning. You can see I've got my coffee notebook and computer out over here, but let's go over here on the other side of the table where my taro plant is. And this is my black coral taro plant. And taro plant is actually the official plant of the state of Hawaii, in case you did not know that. This is actually scientifically a colocasia, also very commonly referred to as an elephant ear. And I absolutely love the dark coloring on this plant, but we have had some problems. And this is not actually where we normally live. We normally live over there and I'll get to that in a second as to why it's not over there right now. But ever since I got this plant, we started out, we had aphids, then we had spider mites. And if I'm being honest we have never fully gotten rid of the spider mites and I actually left a damaged leaf on here for you guys because I don't know if we've ever talked before about what spider mite damage looks like. Let me get the exposure down here a little bit for you guys so you can see a little bit better perhaps but if you can see how that looks all kind of speckled and like it's losing its coloring that's what spider mite damage looks like. So if you see your plant's leaves doing that, check the backside of them because usually that means you have spider mites. And I do think we've gotten it under control this year so far because you can see these big, beautiful new leaves that have been coming in. They don't have any kind of damage on them. They're looking great. And I have been using my DIY pest spray on this plant, so I think that's been helping a lot. So hopefully we will do well this year. But this is also one of those plants that you can cut all the way back to the soil if you needed to, and it will come back. So that's another way to kind of get rid of pests if you're really, really struggling. And I did do that to this plant last summer, and it has clearly come all the way back. Now, this plant will survive in ground around here. It will die off in the winter. It might survive in this pot in the winter here, but I don't risk it. I roll it into the garage if it gets below freezing, just to be on the safe side. And the banana tree that we looked at over here, that particular variety is super hardy to this area. And so it will survive pretty extreme temperatures, but I also just wheel it in in the winter just in case if it gets below freezing. But from here, let's go ahead and we'll move on over to the plants back here. And so I will point out that that taro plant is supposed to be living over here, but this rock bed that I built out got completely messed up by the people who remodeled my pool recently and they just like demolished this whole area and everything got all broken up and everything and I need to rebuild it. So once I rebuild it, that taro plant will be living over here. But if we come along here, over here we have my canna lilies and I have a lot of these back here. Absolutely love the canna lilies and everything you're gonna see that's planted in ground over here for the most part with the exception of two plants are perennials. So what that means is they're gonna die back in the winter after the first frost and then they'll start to come back in the spring. So all of this started pushing back up about a month ago and now we're mostly filled in, but absolutely love canna lilies. There's different colors that you can get and everything. The flowers are just super, super pretty. 
And I will say that it does help if after the flowers become spent, you cut them off to promote new buds to come in. And so here's what I mean. You can see here, there's like no more flowers left on here. It's starting to develop seeds all along here. And so this can be removed, but you gotta be careful where you cut it because the new bud always comes in. This is a new flower bud coming in. It always comes in at the base of the old bud. So just make sure when you're trimming them, you don't trim too low because then that's gonna cause a problem. So you just wanna get right in there and cut that off. Now, another problem with canna lilies, you can see down here, we have some caterpillar damage. They're highly susceptible to the caterpillars from the white moth. I had a real big problem with them at the end of last summer. So I am gonna use my DIY pest mix to try to keep them at bay this year, but I don't wanna deter the bees from pollinating. So I'm gonna have to be really careful to make sure I only use it on the leaves and not get any on the flowers. But yeah, love the canna lilies. And then if we move on here, let me get a little bit lower. It might be easier to see them, maybe. Maybe not, but this is purple heart tradscantia. So you've seen my Albo vitata tradscantia that I have indoors, the same family of plants, but this is a much hardier variety. So this will, like I said, survive until the first frost, it dies back and then it pops back up in the spring. And I love this deep, deep purple color of it. And it does get these little purple flowers. Let's see if we can zoom up in on one over here. These little cute little purple bullish pinkish, I guess, flowers. And so that goes on throughout the spring and summer and they do grow really, really fast and they start to spread out really, really fast. So you do kind of have to keep them tamed if you need to, which I do need to here. And if you'll notice, there is like a blank space here. And that's because I did have tricolor oyster plants planted in between these on this side of the flower bed and the other side. And I actually had four of those tricolor oyster plants planted out front. They were labeled as perennials when I bought them at Home Depot. I knew from my own research and understanding that they probably weren't perennials and wouldn't come back. And looks like I was right. But I don't really mind having that gap there because when these alocasia portoras, which is what this is, when they start to get bigger, it's going to be nice because it's just, they're just going to be framing this. So this is alocasia portora, portora, I can talk, otherwise known as an upright elephant ear. And so it is a bulb based plant. So very similar to the colocasia, the tarot plant that we looked at. And so once again, it'll die back in the winter and it'll be nothing. You can actually see the old remnants of the original stalks down there but then you can see where all these new growth points have sprouted up and there's some more starting behind this. These did get a slightly later start of coming back in this year than I would have liked, but they're gonna grow super fast. I'll flash up on screen what they looked like at the end of last summer and that's how big they're gonna get this year as well. We just got, like I said, a slightly later start, but coming in very, very nicely now. Absolutely love them. And you can overwinter these as well by digging the bulbs up, but I just covered them with a frost cloth after they died back after the first frost and we did fine. So, so far we've only been looking at perennials, but if we come over here, we've got the sedge grass here. This is Japanese sedge and this particular variety is called Ever Gold. It's the grower who's naming that, but I love this kind of bright yellow color to it. And since purple and yellow are complementary colors, it complements each other very well here. And I just love it. it's like little pom-poms of grass. And these are evergreen, so they stay all winter long. They will be here. So that way I don't have a completely barren flower bed throughout the winter, but I've got them here framing out the pygmy date palm. And we've gotten quite a bit bigger than last year. I'll try to find a picture and flash it up on screen for you. But it's not like the craziest fast grower, but that's okay, I don't need it to be. But I will say be careful with palms because they do get sharp, sharp spikes. Let's see if we can get in here so that maybe you can see what I'm talking about at the base. So I'm gonna probably accidentally prick myself, but those thin offshoots down there are super sharp spikes. So you wanna be careful when you're pruning or repotting or anything palms. But they're very interesting in how they grow. They come in in a big solid piece like this and then this slowly fans out to be individual leaves on those fronds. It's really interesting how it grows, but absolutely love it. It's kind of my centerpiece back here. And then we've got more canna lilies, more of the upright elephant ears, more of our purple heart tradscantia. And then if we come over here, we have a bird bath. It came with the house when I bought it. I kind of liked it. So I left it over here in the corner, but if I'm being honest with you, it's really more of a squirrel bath. I rarely see birds there. I always see squirrels. <laughs> and down here, I've kind of framed that out similarly to how I framed out the pygmy date palm with some more Japanese sedge grass. And this variety I believe is called Everest. And so this one's got dark green in the middle, and then it's got that kind of white stripe on the outer edge, but still has that nice kind of like 
pom-pom effect. And this will survive throughout the winter as well. So once again, I don't have a completely barren flower bed. More cannas over here. And then over here we have my plumeria. And if you remember, I'll flash up on screen what this guy looked like over winter. And so yeah, even though I brought this guy indoor for the winter, it still went dormant and lost all its leaves and just looked kind of dead. But I knew it wasn't dead and here we are now. We've gotten leaves coming back in and hopefully we will get flowers here this year. I did acquire this plant pretty late in the season last year, so I never actually got flowers on it. But they get these very, very lovely smelling little flowers. I'll see if I can find some stock footage to show you what they look like, but they smell so good. I'm so excited for it to actually bloom this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. And this is pretty hardy variety in the summer for the type of heat and temperature I get here. But in the winter, this will have to be brought indoors like I did last year because it won't survive. So from here, I will let you know, right over there on that little rock pad is where my Hawaiian tea plant should be living. But we've just had crazy winds here this year. I don't know if anybody else feels like it's just been insanely windier than normal, but I feel like it has and she keeps getting blown over and so i had to move her way over there we're gonna look at her last she's over there by the patio table because i was trying to protect her from getting constantly blown over by the winds but let's look at the plants over here outside of my bedroom window first so this actually was the only bit of landscaping back here that was here when i first moved in and so these are the original plants from when i moved in on the ends but we had that very very bad winter storm where we got record low temperatures and everything and it actually killed the two original plants that were in the middle here. So these are new as of last year, but they're the same type of plant that was there before. But let's start over here. So this is Texas sage. This is an evergreen plant, so it will be here throughout the winter here. And I have um, apparently become a topiary because I was trying to trim this and somehow it ended up in this perfect ball. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> I'm not really sure uh, how, but I kind of like it. And you do see here that this plant will get these cute little purple flowers all over it very cute. It's a very soft leaved plant. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but it's a really, really soft textured leaf. It's very nice. has kind of a, a nice smell to it. Kind of similar to how I talk about my Dichondra Silver Falls. Kind of has a, a smell to it that reminds me of like how plants like eucalyptus put off a smell. And these plants actually kind of do the same thing, but they remind me of more of a pine type smell. And this is a dwarf bottle brush plant. I think it's called a Little John bottle brush plant. But it's called that because when this gets flowers, they come in and they extend kind of this link on the end of the stems. And it's these little, like, looks like little feathery red flowers that makes it look like a bottle brush you would use to clean a water bottle if you were doing dishes. That's why it has that name. But these are also very, very soft textured leaves. And you might even be able to see kind of the fuzziness to them on camera here. But I actually really, really like this plant because those flowers come in red and they will still flower sometimes in the fall and winter. And it makes it look very Christmassy, which is kind of nice. And so this is the same plant over here. And then there's another sage over there. And then this was all rock when I moved in here. And I think part of that has to do with water drainage and runoff because there are no gutters up here. And so there is a French drain system below this over there in the corner. So I think that's why they did this so that it could just drain out to the street. But I kind of like how it looks. And then the other sage over here, you might notice I don't have this one trimmed up into as perfect of a ball yet. And the reason is when that winter storm happened, both of the sages actually did get severely damaged. I had to cut this one almost like down to like here to get rid of the dead limbs and encourage the new growth to come in. That one was not as damaged. So it came back to that size pretty quickly. And I've just been waiting for this one to get a little bit bigger before I finish trimming it into that ball shape like the other one. Now, if we come over here, well, first of all, I have some purple heart plants I've been propagating back there. It's super easy to do any kind of trad scanty. You just cut it off, stick it in dirt, and it will root. So that's what's going on over there. But then we have my Asiatic Jasmine Snow and Summer here. Let me try and get this exposure up here a little bit for you guys. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. It's a little darker over here. Okay, there we go. So absolutely love this plant. Now I have, because of the winds, had to put this one in a wind protected spot that was more shady. So it's looking very green and kind of orange and coppery red right now. But I'm going to flash up on screen here for you what it looks like when it's been in the full sun and you can see all the white and kind of pinkish tones on there that's why it's called snow and summer so now that i've moved this back over here because 
The winds seem to have died down in the last few days. Hopefully they will stay that way and it won't get blown off of here. But now it's gonna get more light. I should start to see that coloring coming in again. But this plant is a very, very fast grower. It will trail. I did give it a trim recently because it was looking a little scraggly from all of its runners that were coming down. But I absolutely love it. And it is pretty cold tolerant. If it was in the ground, it definitely would be, but I do bring it in in the winter just because it's in a pot. And anything in a pot, you guys outside, it's not gonna survive cooler temperatures to the same level as something planted in the ground because the ground helps to keep it warmer. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at temperature ranges for plants. Whether you put it in a pot versus in the ground is gonna have a huge impact on whether that temperature range is gonna hold true. So let's move on to my Hawaiian tea plant, who unfortunately, is looking a little bit shredded because like I said, she keeps getting knocked over and the wind has not been kind to her. And I'm like very sad about it, but our new growth is coming in untattered. So you can see these new leaves that are popping up here. Let me brighten this up a little bit more for you guys. There you go. So these pretty, pretty pink leaves, they come in with like a little bit of green on them sometimes and then they get a little bit darker as they get older. So our new growth is coming in beautiful, but from getting knocked over and torn up by the wind, we are like shredded. I mean, it's just a hot mess. I keep coming over here and she's like down on the ground and I put these bricks here to try to secure her so she won't fall over. But you can see the pot actually got broken at one point when she got knocked over. It's just been a rough spring for this plant, but we are gonna come back and we are gonna look gorgeous after all this new growth starts to come in. And this is a cordy line. I think I've told you guys that before, very woody stem plant. And they typically are not gonna get any new leaves here when the leaves fall off. They just continue to get growth at the top. But if they get too kind of tall for you or anything like that, they're really easy to propagate. You just cut the stems off, cut them into segments, and you just pot them up in soil. That's pretty much all there is to it. So I can always do that to get her like bushier down, further down if I want to, which I might need to because maybe she's just a little too top heavy and that's why she keeps getting blown over in the wind. But who knows? She's still gorgeous. I love her. And these do come in a variety of different colors out there. And I just really, really liked the pink one, but hopefully I'll be able to move her back to her regular spot here soon. And she is not cold hardy either. So in the winter, I do have to take her into the garage or inside when it gets below freezing. But I absolutely love my backyard, even with all my plants not in the correct places right now. And the pool remodel turned out very nice. And this is just kind of my little backyard tropical oasis. And I absolutely love of it. I would love to know what kind of plants you guys have in your backyard if you want to comment down below and let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little outdoor plant tour today. If so, please hit that like and or subscribe button down below and I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha!